James the Preacher here, more words to stimulate you and excite you and just put a smile on your face. I'd like to give to you some Bible teaching, God's role for the Christian woman. This is God's role for the Christian woman. God desires, and his plan for you is for you to be a keeper at home. Your career is not to be off in the workplace, not Walmart or doctor, attorney, lawyer, whatever, uh, not uh, uh, to, to be in a hospital, whatever. Your place, if you're a Christian married woman, is to be a keeper at home. In today's modern world, it, it takes a lot of energy to be stupid. I mean, education is accessible, information is everywhere, and, and the world is full of lessons. To be stupid, you've got to work at it. And a lot of people are doing a great job. Let me give you what the Bible says, the authority of the Word of God. It says in Titus chapter 2, uh, it says here, verse 5, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. So your place is to be a keeper at home. Uh, do you see the, 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 uh, the, the sinfulness, uh, the, the results of a woman being out of where God intended her to be? Women have become proud and arrogant. Uh, women have become haughty. Women have become independent, uh, where they ought to rely upon their husband and lean on him. Uh, women have gotten to a point now in our society where they're all over the workplace and it's been the cause for many uh, adulterous relationships where they're all over the workplace and it's been the cause for many uh, adulterous relationships Because women uh, have been not in ho at home, but out in the workforce. And so they always, you know, make themselves try to look as pretty as they can. Most of them don't succeed, but they do try to look the best they can and smell the best they can. And uh, the, the husband comes to work and uh, of, of uh, his wife, who's maybe sweating, taking care of the children or whatever, and uh, busy around the home. And, 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 he, and he's surrounded by these women that dress that such a way and uh, in, in a way to entice a man to get their attention. Uh, and so what happens is, and, and it's, it's a fact, you can see throughout history, when women started going into the workforce the way they have, uh, adultery just skyrocketed. A failure to see things as they really are, to be open to new information. This is the mechanism for the creation of stupidity. Because they won't learn. So I, I define stupidity as the learned corruption of learning. Yeah, that's right. So that's when I realized that's what made people stupid. Uh, but there's a lot of other things. Listen, uh, you look, you'll probably find out your insurance rates got higher because women get more tickets and drive faster. Listen. being mean or anything. Oh man, no way. God would have Christian women to stay at home, to take care of the family, to take care of their children, uh, all five or six or seven, eight, nine, ten children, to, to take care of their husbands. And what we've got today, listen, we've got women that are proud, we've got women that are uh, opposite of what God desires. And Don't hand me that. Uh, and that's part of the reason for the much divorce as we have today. Uh, we've given them some independence, and they get a few dollars, and they uh, they think there's something, and they and they start fighting with the husband. And it's just things are in a mess today. And part of the reason why our families are in a mess is because the women have left the God-given place of being at home. They went off into the workplace. don't like it, take it up with God's book. If you don't agree, take it up with God's book. If your preacher says he doesn't agree, well, your preacher's wrong and the Word of God is right. So I'm just giving it to you as God says it. Plain and simple. When I start, I just can't stop. If you keep this up, you're going to blow your top. 
the results we have of women being out of their God-given place is destroying our nation. So this is James the Preacher just giving it to you with all the love I can. Don't you feel the love today? Too late this time. I gotta get what's mine. Get down on it and everything will be all right. Let me cover some tools for the keeper at home, the Christian godly woman uh, that, that loves God, that obeys his word and what it says in Titus chapter 2, 1 through 5. Number one, here's a tool, socks. Here's a tool, socks. Ladies, it's your job to do laundry. In fact, it'd be really good if you learned to iron your husband's socks, make them real uh, uh, stiff and uh, just uh, starch them, you know, take care of them. <laughs> Uh, here's another tool, ladies, for you. It's This is a cup. Uh, it, it, another job of yours is to take care of the dishes, is to, to, to scrub them, and, and it'd be good for you, ladies. Here's another tool for the godly Christian woman. It's a feather duster. That's right. Yeah, you don't need to be out in the workforce. Work at home. Man, you ought to get a step ladder and go around and dust the corners. You ought to dust the bookshelves. This is great, isn't it? You, you know, gentlemen, what should you get your wife for her birthday? Or get her a duster. What do you, what do you, what do you get your wife for, uh, for, uh, for, for a gift? Buy her a new iron. <laughs> or a shotgun. Or a shotgun. Here's another thing that ought to be part of the godly woman's life. It's a baby. Yeah, guess who ought to be changing the diapers? Not somebody at the daycare center. Not grandma. Uh, keepers at home. Ladies. Uh, mamas. You, you ought to have as many children as God allows you to. That's This idea of birth control is, uh, is wicked. It's ungodly. You ought to, you ought to have, have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten children. <laughs> Because God designed you uh, to take care of those babies, woman. God designed you to take care of your husband. You realize when he comes home from work, you ought to you ought to have his favorite glass of uh, of Coca Cola ready, and a snack for him. And you ought to go over uh, and you ought to say, "Husband, can I do something for you?" Honey, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you're home. Give him a kiss right on the cheek. And what can I do for you? That's what you ought to do. And if you look down and see that his shoes are a little dirty, you ought to shine his shoes. Oh, honey, here's your Coca Cola, here's your coffee, here's your snack. Dinner will be ready in just 45 minutes. I'll have it ready for you, honey. And let me take your shoes and shine your shoes. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? James the Preacher, don't you feel the love right now? Have a nice day. Nobody has any, uh, should have any joy that anybody goes to hell. However, we must state the facts here. You're headed for hell. Have a nice day. Your friend, James the Preacher.